Hi there, it's James from Junior Developer Central and in this tutorial I wanted to walk you through the FizzBuzz coding exercise and this is a challenge that can be set quite commonly in junior developer interviews to filter out those people who maybe say they have got some programming experience but can't actually solve problems. So FizzBuzz has been around for years. There was a blog post about 10 years ago by a guy called Imran Ghori who explained how they use this challenge in their own interviews and it's certainly something that I've been asked in interviews before and we've used used at our company to test junior developers when they're applying for positions. So I'll explain in a moment what employers are looking for when they ask you this in an interview, but first let's go through the problem and a possible solution. So if you do get asked to solve FizzBuzz in an interview, you'll probably get a problem presented to you like this. So write a program that's printing numbers from 1 to 100, but if the number is a multiple of 3, print Fizz, if it's a multiple of 5, print Buzz, and if it's a multiple of both, print the word FizzBuzz. So you know you're going to need to loop through the numbers from 1 to 100. So a for loop is ideal for this. So I'm just going to code this along in the Chrome console. So I'll be using JavaScript, but obviously it might be a different language depending on what type of job you're applying for. So let's just write out that for loop. So it might say something along the lines of let i equals 1, because we want to start at 1. And while i is less than or equal to 100, and I'm going to say i plus equals 1. So the key to this problem is to work out is the current value of i a multiple of one of those numbers specified. And the best way to do that is using the modulus operator. So if I was to use an if statement and say if i modulus 3 is equal to 0, then if that's the case, then what I could do is just console log the word fizz. And if i modulus 5 is equal to 0 as well, so there's no remainder for that, we can console log out the buzzword. And we also need to put the condition in that if i is a multiple of 3 and 5 to print fizzbuzz out. And you might be tempted to put that at the bottom here after these other if statements. And of course we also need to print out the number as well if it's not one of those values. But if we actually run the for loop as it is now, you can see the numbers are being printed out. Um, but where we should be seeing just fizz or buzz or fizzbuzz. So with our if statements, we need to make sure that they don't all get triggered at the same time. So the ordering of these is quite important. So let's reorder those now. So with that reordering, we'll first check whether the value of i is a multiple of 3 and 5. And if so, print fizzbuzz else we'll check if it's a multiple of 3 or a multiple of 5 and if it doesn't match any of those rules we'll console log out the number. So this time if we hit enter you can see the sequence of numbers goes 1, 2, fizz and 3 is missing, 4 buzz and 5 is missing and the first one for fizz buzz should be 15 as that's the first number that's divisible by both 3 and 5 and you can see 15 is missing and we've got the text of fizz buzz. So that's a, a pretty standard way of solving FizzBuzz. There are, of course, many other ways of doing it, and depending on what programming language you're doing it in, there might be shortcuts that you can take. But you need to be careful about how clever you make your solution, and I'll tell you why in just a second. But you could do something like this, and that will give you exactly the same result. But as you can see, it's a lot less lines of code, but it's a lot harder to read. And that's the reason why you need to be careful about how you code this, and it's also what employers are looking for. Because at interview, they're not only looking to see if you can solve a problem, but also how readable is your code, and if they were to give you the position, what sort of code would you produce for them? Because our first solution, although it wasn't the most elegant and definitely not the shortest way of doing it, it was very readable to see what was going on. Whereas this example, would probably give other developers nightmares of trying to work out what's going on with this line of code. So that's the key thing with FizzBuzz at interview. You need to know how to solve the problem first of all, but you also need to keep it simple and where possible make it functional as well. For example, you could put your code into a function and make it more flexible by passing in the two values and even the text to be displayed as parameters. And that's what I did in one of my interviews and that actually ended up getting me the job based on the quality and the readability of my solution to FizzBuzz, not playing code golf and seeing how short a solution you could write. So if you've got your own solution to FizzBuzz, just drop it in a comment below. It'd be great to see other people's examples and how they've used it, especially at interview. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more web development tutorials and tips.